man. Welcome back. It's always good to have my twin brother in town, man. It's so good. You know, you've heard of Daryl, my other brother Daryl. This is Tim, my other brother Tim, all right? Uh, hey, welcome. Good to have you here. Uh, I don't know what kind of week you've had, but I'm glad you're here today. Uh, God has something in store for us, and uh, I hope we pay attention for the next hour or so, because he's going to tell us. Uh, the question is whether we're going to listen or not. Um, if you are visiting with us, we are honored to have you here. Thanks for coming. Uh, you're going to hear from somebody else in just a moment about a card that we want you to fill out. Um, we have a new sound system installed this week. Okay? So if it sounds a little bit different, <laughs> it's going to, I mean, it got put in yesterday. All right? Milo and uh, Mr. Kemp back there were here all day yesterday. Uh, it's, it's not just a, you unplug something and plug something in. It's, 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 it's much more complicated than that. It's too complicated. I had to leave the building. Um, but anyway, so if things are a little hotter today than normal, it's going to get adjusted. All right? It, they're, they're gonna, it's just going to work. I feel really hot right now. Am I, is, am I hot? I don't, no, I don't, I'm being hot on the microphone. All right? I wasn't fishing for a compliment of any kind. All right? Uh, it's been a long, never mind. Well, anyway, uh, at least turn me down in my own head, okay? <laughs> Can you do that back there? Can you turn me down in my head? All right. Uh, anyway, great to have you here. I want to draw your attention to the screen as we look at our, we've got some new stars being born in our church today. Let me direct you to the overhead. Good morning, everybody. Glad to have you with us here today at New Hope Community Church. Uh, it's our mission to compellingly communicate to every man, woman, and child that we come in contact with the all-sufficiency of Jesus Christ. So I'm really praying that that will happen for you today here, that we will communicate clearly. Uh, if you're a guest with us today, let me invite you to take one of those Connect cards in front of you, and fill it out, put it back in the offering when the ushers come around later. Get in contact with us so we can get in contact with you and give you some of that great information about exciting things that are happening here at the Mobile Church. Again, we're glad to have you with us. Hope you enjoy your time this morning. Hi, I'm Emily. Hi, I'm Holly. And, and together, we're Holly and Emily. Did you know that the pasta feed was tonight? There's a pasta feed? Yeah, it's to raise money for Heartland Christian Camp. My favorite part about Heartland Christian Camp is the chapel there's the mr j band they sing songs in the zip line what's your favorite part my favorite part is walking up to the cross and the mr j band they're amazing cool there's the raffle tickets too if you like this new hope cup or this starbucks gift card and a dinner and a movie and more stuff then get, get your raffle tickets today franklin graham is coming to the fresno fairgrounds on may 28th at 7 30 in the evening jeremy camp will be doing the music and franklin graham will be bringing the gospel this is a great opportunity to bring friends and family that don't normally go to church. Parenting teenagers is one of the hardest things ever. Trust me, as a youth pastor who deals with teenagers, I see it all the time. Teenagers speak a completely different language. That's why we here at New Hope want to help you parents. We want to team up with you. We want to empower you. We want to equip you to be able to take your parenting to the next level. That's why on June 23rd, we are gonna have a one day parent conference with special guest speakers um, up from Southern California, Dave and Temple Scott. They're gonna teach us some awesome tips and tricks to be able to connect with our teenagers on a whole nother level. You can register online at newhopechurch.net. The cost is $20 for a family unit. That's going to include lunch, snacks, coffee, and everything that goes on that day. Make sure you register today. Hi, we're Holly and Emily again. Are you graduating? No. But you know who is. On June 10th, it's graduation Sunday. What's graduation Sunday? I have no idea. But I think it's when the high schoolers and college seniors graduate. So come join us on June 10th to celebrate and honor them. Okay, knit one, purl two. That's the sum total of my knowledge about knitting. But that could change for me and for you. Uh, this Saturday, uh, from 10 till noon, here in the office, 
we're going to have a one day crocheting slash knitting class for any lady, any young girl, any guy, anybody who wants to learn about knitting. And we're going to do that so that we can make hats that are going to go in the Operation Christmas Child boxes later this year. So let me invite you to come 10 a.m. Saturday and you can learn how to knit one or purl two, whatever that means. Corey will bikers, not bicycles, but motorcycles. If you want to join other New Hope riders for a ride up to Oakhurst on June 3rd, right after 8 o'clock service, then the sign-up sheet's going around today. I just want to let you know of a couple things that are going on here at New Hope on June 3rd. These are things you're going to want to pay attention to. Typically, at New Hope on a Sunday morning, we have four Sunday services, one at 8, one at 9.15, one at 10.45, one at 6 p.m. You're probably sitting in one of those right now. Well, if you are in our 10.45 or our 6 p.m. Sunday night service, pay attention. There is a service time change for you. We will be starting at 11 a.m. on Sunday, June 3rd, and at 5 p.m. on Sunday night on June 3rd. So make sure you mark those times. New service times brings new exciting things. Um, make sure you mark that down. Thank you very much for your attention to our life in the church. We're so glad that you're here with us today. And I hope that while you're here, we are successful in compellingly communicating to you the all-sufficiency of Jesus. If you find yourself in need of some extra prayer, would you put that on one of those communication cards that I spoke of earlier? Let us know how we can pray for you. We look at those every week. And uh, we'd be glad and happy to pray for you in any way that we can. Thanks again for being here. How about those two new stars, huh? Out a boy, Steve Brown. Good job. <laughs> nah, those girls are hot. The sign-up sheets going around are just for the motorcycle ride, all right? That's coming up on uh, June the 3rd. You come to the 8 o'clock service, you start up all your engines out back, and uh, then you take off. You're going to end up at Oakhurst having breakfast at Pete's Place. If you signed up already, you don't need to re-sign again. This is just going around one more time. Uh, let me highlight a couple of extra things, a little more punch to a few of the announcements. Tonight, pasta feed starts at 5 o'clock. There'll be all kinds of pasta here for you to enjoy. But you know that because many of you are bringing it. Uh, so... Um, Here's the deal. Go out after the service today. If you haven't got your dinner tickets for tonight, pick those up. You can get them tonight, but it certainly lets them know in advance uh, a little bit how to better to prepare for you if you buy them today. Number two, go out there and buy your raffle tickets. There are over 80 raffle gifts out there, all right? Uh, and so go buy your raffle tickets. They're a dollar a piece or $20 for your height. I understand that Tim and Fawn Boss are out there. You can use their height if you would like to for your $20, all right? Or get John Reelhorn over there and get his height in uh, raffle tickets. And then tear them up, go put them in. Please put your name and a contact number on the back if you're not going to be here. If you're going to be here tonight for the drawings, then your number is adequate. But if you're not going to be here, uh, please put your name and contact information because we'll only keep it for about a week and then I'm going to give your prize to somebody else, all right? because we need the office space back. So uh, it's important if you're not going to show up that you put your contact information on the back of the raffle ticket. This is our fundraiser for our 4th, 5th, and 6th graders to go to Heartland Camp. Uh, the price of Heartland Camp is, uh, a, a four, is a little over $450 a, a student. Okay, That's still cheaper than, than Hume, but it's expensive. Um, we're trying to reduce that so that every parent can get it down to about 150 bucks a person, all right? And so your help with the raffle tickets, your help tonight at the dinner is what's going to make that possible. Here's the other kicker for us. Last week I told you we had a record number going. Last year, 20 was our record. Last week, our record number was at 28. Our record number as of today is 32. 32 fourth, fifth, and sixth graders going to camp, man good things happen at church camp so we really do want to help them a week from tomorrow night is decision america at fresno fairgrounds all right uh billy graham's son franklin graham is going to be delivering the word on how to know jesus jeremy camp's going to be there leading worship uh, it'll go from 7 30 to 9 o'clock all right so that's a week from tomorrow evening fresno fairgrounds 
let's see here. There's an announcement in there that was not on uh, the screen. It's, it's, it's called all in all, Calling All Newbies. What's a newbie? I've defined it in here for you. If you've been attending New Hope for less than a year, okay, so this is May. So if you start coming since last May, I'm calling you a newbie. Here's the invite to you. Shelly and I and Pastor Mark and Jennifer are inviting you to a Let's Get Acquainted dessert. It's going to be hosted at our house. It's going to be homemade ice cream and some surprise. So you got to come check this out, all right? The date's on there. The time's on there. Would love for you to... Oh, love to have you RSVP to my email address. It's in there. If you don't do email, call the office and RSVP. Now, I already put a disclaimer apology in here. This happened before they ever read it. I already had three people in the last service saying, well, you didn't do that when I was new. Here's the disclaimer. This is a first of what we hope will become an annual event. I sincerely apologize to you oldies that we didn't do this when you were a newbie. I wasn't wise enough yet. Pastor Tim, all right? So anyway, for you newbies, it's a Thursday evening. It's 6.45 to about, I think I said, 8.30. Uh, if you don't have to stay that long if you don't like the ice cream, all right? But it's a chance for us to get better acquainted with you and for you to have a chance to ask us any questions you would like to know about New Hope Church, all right? So uh, please, RSVP. A few prayer requests or updates on things that were either not in your bulletin or I've got updates. Jim Levendusky, who spent four weeks and had four surgeries uh, at the hospital, he is home from the hospital. He is improving. We are grateful for that. Ralph Emery, uh, I shared with you last week, uh, they were on their way the week before to church. They were excited about the, the Heaven series. And after breakfast on their way to church, he got severe pains between his shoulder blades. Uh, that turned out to an MR, into an MRI, which turned out to be a diagnosis of his, his, all of his internal organs are riddled with cancer. And uh, I have been at their home four times in the last uh, eight days. And uh, yesterday at about four o'clock, Ralph went to heaven. Uh, and he, when, 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 when his wife called me just minutes after it happened, she said, Tim, I prayed him through. I got him there, man. I got him there. And when I got to the house, the neighborhood come over just, just at about that time. Uh, he said, when I walked in the room, she was in a chair by his bed. She had a hand on his head and a hand on his knee, and she had fallen asleep praying. And while she had fallen asleep praying, he went to heaven. And uh, Ralph was so excited. He said, uh, the, the first day I went, he said, Tim, he said, we were so excited about learning more about heaven. He said, but guess what? I'm going to get to send you some illustrations now. And uh, so I'm waiting for them. I'm, I'm waiting for them. But they were so excited about the journey. And I thought, you, I, in fact, I was going to go over with, with, with Mark or Chris this week, and I was going to video an interview with Ralph about his excitement in going to heaven. And he got too excited to go to heaven. He didn't wait for the interview. All right? I'm a little ticked at him. Um, but anyway, be praying for his wife, Darlene. His son and daughter were there with him as well. Uh, and, and so we don't have any schedule of services yet. Those will get planned the next couple of days. Um, Johnny Miller, all right, Steve Drake's pop, all right, you've been praying for him. He was diagnosed with acute leukemia uh, several months ago. He's been going through a variety of treatments and then waiting for some results. The results came back this week and the treatment was not effective. And uh, they have really put this down to a situation that months are what we're looking at. He's uh, enjoying Cambria this weekend and uh, making some final decisions about what next step are going to be. I had a chance to visit with him and Steve uh, just on Friday. And uh, let me tell you, Johnny's, Johnny's, uh, he's excited to stay and he's excited to what heaven has for him as well. So uh, just be praying for the Millers, if you would, please. Frank Hicks is having a tough time this week. He's in a, a, a memory care facility and it, this has been a difficult week for him. So if you'd remember to pray for Frank. And then uh, some of you will recognize this name. One of my mama's dearest and closest friends uh, was a missionary for over 30 years in the Ivory Coast of Africa in the same region where we go and we've adopted the village of Neonan. Uh, Sarah was the last person to come down and visit with my mom before my mom passed away on a Saturday morning. Um, she has been in a Alzheimer care facility for the last four years and 
I got a call from her daughter this week that she had taken a rapid turn for the worse and was out under hospice care. Uh, made a quick trip up there on Wednesday. Uh, I felt like I owed that to my mama as well as to Sarah and uh, got to be with her daughter Mary, spelled M-E-R-R-Y, like Merry Christmas. I love it. And uh, I just got a text from her that uh, we're probably minutes or hours away right now. So um, uh, Sarah's going to be going home very, very soon. And so if you just remember the Mayhew family, I know they would appreciate that. And one last one, Jimmy Robertson. Uh, most of you probably don't know Jimmy unless you ate a lot at TGI Fridays or at Vino and Friends. He was the chef at both of those places. Uh, Jimmy's dad was Mike Garrison, who uh, owned Eddie's Speed Shop in Fresno for many years. Uh, Mike passed away last year. His service was here. Uh, Jimmy, I went and visited about five weeks ago. Um, he had some real health challenges, and he just said, Tim, can you come pray? He said, um, I don't want to bargain with God, but I'd love to walk my daughter down the aisle in two weeks at her wedding. He walked her down the aisle, and, uh, and then he took a rapid turn for the worse this week, and he went to be with Jesus uh, on Thursday. And his service will be here this Wednesday at 11 o'clock, 48 years old, but he, he, knew, he knew the Lord. He knew the Lord. He was going, he, he's in heaven. He has no regrets, trust me, today, not one. And we are grateful for that. Who I'm praying, wants you to pray for is his wife, Marnie. Lost her dad and her husband in less than a year. So just be praying for her, if you would. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward, wait on us as we have our morning tithes and offering. Would you join with me as we pray? Father, I love you so much. I'm grateful for your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who is the difference maker in our lives. He is the one who enables Ralph to be excited about his next step and his next journey in life. And, um, it's Jesus Christ who enables Johnny to, uh, to face his future with a great deal of certainty. And so, Father, I thank you for him, I, I, for your son. And Lord, I, I guess one of my greatest desires for my own life is that I can talk about heaven in such a way with others that they're going to want to go there. And they're one going to make the important decision that is necessary in order for us to know that that when we take our last breath here, our first breath with you is celestial. It's awesome. Father, we need, to, uh, we need to allow your truth to have a significant impact on our lives. That when we hear about somebody dying, our first response is not, oh no. But Father, it's oh yes. We, we see things so finitely. We see things from such a this-moment-only perspective that we lose sight of the grand picture of eternity, time that does not end, and a place that is perfection. So give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a mind to comprehend a bit deeper what our future with you is like. We trust you with all the needs that we've already expressed here today and those that others of us walked in these doors with that we've not shared with anybody else. I trust all of us will share our needs with you at this particular moment. You tell us to cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. You tell us to be anxious for nothing because we can trust you with our everything. And so God, if we're holding too tightly to some things right now, I pray that somehow over the next, the next several minutes you will, you will give us a, a, a strength and a wisdom and a, um, a clarity about a truth that allows us to release those things that we hold so tightly to that create so much frustration and worry and anxiousness in us. You tell us you have for us a peace that passes understanding. You tell us in your word you have a joy beyond human expression. And these are in spite of, not because of, our circumstances. Father, we need... There are some of us who are here today who need a, a fresh breeze of your heavenly truth so that we live the life you desire for us on earth. You know our needs today, and we say thank you. For the privilege of giving and sharing today, it's a joy to honor you, Father, in this way. 
We trust you. In Christ's name we pray. Yesterday, there was a royal wedding. I, uh, I woke up at 3.55, wide awake. Couldn't go back to sleep. Thought I don't want to disturb Shelly. I'll go see if I can find something boring on TV that'll put me back to sleep. Turned on the TV just as the bride entered the chapel. And I got to watch the royal wedding. It pales in comparison to a future wedding that you and I get to be a part of. We sang about it in that song just now. Hear your bride. To you we sing. You see, you and I are described as the bride of Christ in the church, in the scriptures. And someday, the bridegroom Jesus and you and I, the church, the bride, will be united forever in heaven. I looked at the bride and groom yesterday. They looked like they loved each other. And it pales in comparison to the look that the groom will give to you and me someday. I got some new tips for a wedding yesterday. Uh, I did, I did, yeah. I'm going to start providing a set of chairs for the bride and groom to have a seat so I can just preach a sermon to the audience who's there. I thought, what in the world's going on? They just sat down and, man, the, the, you know, the, the bishop, the Episcopal bishop from the U.S., he preached Jesus, man. I kept listening. I kept waiting for him to connect it to marriage. He never did. He just connected love to Jesus, all right? And he took about 15 minutes and just preached a sermon for the whole world to listen to. And I thought that was awesome, man. I was, I was yeah, yeah, that's worth applause. I got to say this. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be racist here, okay? The black guy lit it up, and the white boys on stage looked bored to tears, and they should have been ashamed of themselves, all right? Because it was a great moment as Jesus was being preached. And I thought, wow, these bishops in England, they, they, I don't know if they know Jesus. Because they were bored stiff, man, during his message. And I thought, wow. Uh, but it was pretty cool. And then I couldn't help but remember uh, the movie Sister Act. Okay, as the choir came on and sang Stand By Me, I mean, that choir director was just like Whoopi Goldberg, man. She was getting after it, and I thought, wow, that was good. So anyway, it was a fun day. That has nothing to do with today's message, but I get a little carried away. Uh, I, I, I did forget to give out one big thank you during uh, Life in the Church, and that was to uh, about 30 folks from New Hope Church who were out on a athletic field at Edison High yesterday doing the Angel Tree football camp. Uh, I not only heard from Teddy what a good event it was, but I got a text since I talked to you from Joe uh, saying thank you. It couldn't have happened without New Hope. And uh, it was just an excellent, outstanding event. And he wanted me to pass on his deep gratitude for all those who helped out with that very special event yesterday. And so we're grateful for that. We're continuing our series in uh, What's Up With Heaven Today. Um, and so we're going to be looking at some critical aspects of what heaven is going to be like. Uh, most of you know, if you've been here over the last few weeks, you know that I'm going on vacation the first uh, 10, 11 days of July. I'm going down the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon. If you were here a couple of weeks ago, I showed you a little video of what we're going to do. It is awesome. I've been looking at more videos since then. I, I can't wait. Uh, I've had people come up to me since we kind of shared that publicly that, wow, Tim, wished I was going with you on that trip. I've had others come and tell me, Tim, I've been on that trip. It's, uh, it's better than any other trip we've ever taken. That's good stuff to hear. This week I got an email. And in that email it says, hey, I know you're excited about your upcoming trip. Here are some things you need to know as you prepare for the trip. And it's a list of things that we probably need to have. And then the, the last thing on there is you can only bring 20 pounds. 20 pounds, it's got to fit in a bag this size, and they're very specific on the size of bag that it will fit in. And so you've got to, you've, you've got to have, uh, you've got to reduce this down pretty minimal. 20 pounds is not a lot, especially when you've got cigars to pack. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of <laughs> minimizing what I can take. But this is important preparation before you ever go. 
And I think about my vacation, and then I got to be with Ralph this week as he went on his forever vacation. And I saw Ralph as excited, and Darlene as about excited for Ralph to go on this vacation. And they're going to heaven as I am on my trip to the Grand Canyon. And somehow, guys, we've got to get to where we as believers have the same excitement about heaven as we do about incredible trips like the Colorado River. Our first response ought not to be when we hear of one of our loved ones dying, oh no, wow, think of what they're looking at. Think of what they're seeing. Think of what they're... I'm going to send pictures back to you guys, all right? So I'm on Colorado. I'm going to send them to Shelly, and she does whatever she wants to with them then, all right? But she'll probably put them on Facebook. I wish... I, Ralph told me, I, I wish he had Facebook so he could send, you know, illustrations back from heaven. So we've got to figure this thing out. And so that's what we're doing during this summer series on heaven. There was a bank in... In, in New York that had some flowers sent to a competitor who had recently moved into a new building. There was a mix-up at the flower shop and the card sent with the arrangement read with our deepest sympathy. The florist was very embarrassed and apologized over the mistake, but as he thought about it, he was even more embarrassed when he realized that the card intended for the bank was attached to the floral arrangement sent to a funeral home in honor of a person who had passed away. And that card read, congratulations on your new location. <laughs> There's a sense though in which I think they got it absolutely right. Uh, I, I was amazed at the background for the last song. I don't know if it was for all the songs, but I was amazed at the background for the last song that Milo had. Did you notice the gold pavers? The streets of gold. Was that, on, was that intentional, Milo? Well, it was, it was God-inspired, all right? So good job. Thanks for listening. There was a rich man who was distressed on hearing that he would not be able to take his wealth with him to heaven. And so he pleaded with God for an extended period of time if God would make an exception for him because he really liked his wealth. And God finally said, okay, whatever you can fit into a garbage bag, you can bring with you. The man immediately thought about gold. He could get a lot of gold in a garbage bag. So he joyfully went and he spent his time accumulating gold. And when it came time for him to die, he approached the pearly gates, black garbage bag in hand, filled with gold. When the angels questioned him about the bag, the man declared, hey, God's allowed it. It's okay. Check with him. So the angels went and checked it out with God, and it was confirmed that God told the man he could bring whatever he could get in a garbage bag with him. The angels asked him to open up the bag. They wanted to see what he had inside that was so important to him that he made a deal with God to bring it in. The man proudly opened the bag to show them the contents of his, of his gold pavers, and the angels looked at the gold with bewilderment and then looked at the man and said, why did you bring pavement to heaven? Ah, oh, now you're getting it. Why, yeah, this is just what we walk on here. Why is it so important to you there? Today, which we haven't done yet, but we're going to look at some specific characteristics of heaven. Up till now, we've been trying to look at what should our attitude be towards this moment, this event that takes us from earth to heaven. And so we've looked at the subject of death for a few weeks. Today, we're going to look at the place where we go called heaven and then we're going to see, once we begin to understand what heaven is like, how should that change the way in which we live while we are here on earth? So, let's look at what the Bible has to say, some of the things the Bible has to say about heaven. Turn, if you would, to John chapter 14. It is probably my favorite passage. Many of you know the first few verses of John chapter 14 by heart. But turn there, if you would, with me. What's important about these verses? And though I've preached out of this passage uh, probably literally hundreds of times over the years at memorial services as well and regular services, uh, it wasn't until just this past year that I had an insight I'd never had before about this passage. And it's so critical for me considering the open, opening line in John chapter 14. And that is this. this. This is one of the final messages that Jesus proclaimed. This is one of the last times that he would publicly speak. 
looming right ahead of Jesus in just a matter of hours and days a variety of horrible things would take place in his life he would be betrayed by one of his friends he would be arrested he would be beaten he would be stripped naked he would be cast into jail he would be paraded through the streets of Jerusalem with a crown of thorns on his head and a cross on his back he would be nailed to a cross and there he would be crucified and he would die and he would be buried that's what he knows is right in front of him a lot of trouble wouldn't you say and his opening line in John chapter 14 is do not let your hearts be troubled Jesus isn't focused on the resurrection yet. Jesus isn't focused on returning to the Father yet. What's what's next in Jesus' life is as bad as it gets. And so Jesus says, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of frustrations, in the midst of of things that, that, that as bad as something could go, this is as bad as it gets. Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. One of the old versions says, there are many mansions in my Father's heaven. As a little kid, I only got to sing a special once in my life. Uh, I was think I was five. They put me on, my grandfather stood me on an altar with a guitar and I strummed, I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. Remember that old song? Yeah. I've got a mansion. This is why I don't sing, just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old and someday yonder we will never more wander Mm -hmm. on streets that are pure as yeah gold yeah Um, you got it you see why I haven't sung it again all right Um, but that that was that was the one and only song I ever sang all right publicly really uh, in in a solo version anyway I could hide in a choir but um, and, 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 and Jesus tells us here, in my Father's house are many rooms. If this wasn't the truth, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And what we've got to remember, on his way to going to prepare that place, he was betrayed, arrested, beaten, and crucified. That was the journey to get there. And he said, I'm doing this for you. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one, no one gets a reservation but through me. But the flip side is also true, but anyone can have a reservation through me. I think I said in the opening sermon, I've often wondered where we got the idea that heaven was up. I wasn't really sure. We just, something, I, I had to do some research. I realized it actually comes out of the Bible. <laughs> That's good to know, isn't it? The things that we have come, actually do come out of the Bible. But I always wondered, you know, what about the people in Australia? You know, up is down and down is up. And, but, but, but the whole idea does come out of the Scriptures. Let me highlight a few. This place that's, that's a mansion that's filled with many rooms is up. And I think maybe up has the idea with up is better than down. You know, there, there's just this positive, negative kind of thing. And so up is always the positive. But here's what, uh, here's what the psalmist said in chapter 48, verses 1 through 3. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of God, in the mountain of holiness. Which way do you go to get into a mountain? You've got to go up to get to the mountains. Beautiful. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, which way is north on a map? It is up, the city of the great king. God is known for his palaces of refuge. The prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 13 and 14, For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mountain of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend to heights above the clouds. I will be the most high. Heaven is above us. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 23 says, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. Deuteronomy 26, 15 says, Look down from heaven. Where do you have to be if you're looking down? You've got to be up. 
your holy dwelling place. Bless your people Israel and the land you have given us and to the oath of the forefathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. Last one, and I'm sure there's more, but this I think is enough evidence. Heaven is up. Psalm 102, 19, the Lord looked down from his sanctuary on high. From heaven, he viewed the earth. So heaven is a real place. It's described as my father's house. And it's up. I've been so blessed to have such a good dad and to have such a good father so long. So when Jesus uses the description of my father's house, it makes really good sense to me. And I'm sorry for some who don't have good dads, for some who didn't have dads. Jesus had the best father there was, so when he used this analogy, it was perfect for him. It works for me. You see, I can go to my father's house and always be at home. I can go to my father's house and always be accepted. I can go to my father's house and always be loved. I can go to my father's house and I don't have to say a word and we can just sit in silence. I can go to my father's house and I may feel ashamed, but he loves me anyway. Jesus wanted us to understand that heaven is a real place and it's as good as it gets. The second thing I think the Bible tells us about heaven is it's also a prepared place by Christ. I go to prepare a place for you, but it's also a prepared place for prepared people. No one enters into heaven by accident. You don't just stumble your way into heaven. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says it like this, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he or she that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Luke chapter 13, verse 3 says it like this, I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will likewise perish. And John 3, 3, Jesus answered and said unto, them, unto him, verily, 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 verily means what? Pay attention. <laughs> verily, verily means this is re- what follows the verily, verily is really, really important. Okay? Verily, verily, I say to you, except a person repents and be born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. This is not an accident. This is a choice that you and I must make. It's not an accidental choice. It's an intentional choice. As good as my father is, I I brag on him too often probably. Maybe personally I don't brag on him enough. I don't know that I've ever known a better man than my dad. There are others that are more talented. There are others that are more gifted. But the purity of his heart towards God and his love of others has not ever been surpassed in other acquaintances of mine. But as good as my dad is, he cannot take his son, his grandsons, or his great-grandchildren to heaven with him. We cannot ride his goodness into heaven. Every single one of us must make this choice that's talked about in Hebrews and Luke and John and I could have gone to a dozen other passages. It is why it is so important to you and I as parents that we let our kids know as much as we want you to have a great education, as much as we want you to choose your your spouse, do a great job in making that decision, we need to tell them far more frequently Your love for Jesus is more important to us than any other accomplishment that you might have in this world. Our kids need to hear that from us. Our grandkids need to hear that from us because our kids might not be telling them. We have best friends and we have good neighbors who need to know that there is a place called heaven that awaits them, but they won't slip in on anybody else's coattails. It's not about 
good acts and great behavior. It is about preparing your heart for the presence of Jesus to come live within you. And it's done through repentance. The third thing the Bible tells us about heaven is that it's a place of holiness. And I know that's going to sound like it's, I don't want to go there, Tim. That sounds really boring. Because we kind of have this, I think, wrong sense of what holiness is, all right? That, that it's bound to be certainly no fun. Don't confuse a place of holiness with, with boring. You see, it is holy because of what will be absent from there. It's holy because sin won't be present. It's holy because sickness isn't anywhere around. It is holy because sorrow won't have a foothold there. It is holy because pain will all be gone. It is holy because death doesn't exist and will never be faced again. It is holy because there is never darkness present in heaven. It is holy because wickedness has no foothold. It is holy because no one who has rejected Jesus Christ will be present. It'll be a great place. Nothing, nothing will ever defile it again. Since Lucifer, as a created being of God, rebelled against God and he and his followers were cast out of heaven, nothing impure will touch it again. And one day, folks, it'll be a new heaven and a new earth. And we'll talk about that later. Do you realize what else won't be in heaven? There'll be no funeral homes, cemeteries, or crematoriums in heaven. Not any, those things we try to avoid but can't avoid, they won't even be present in heaven. There'll be no hospitals. We won't have to worry about running to ER for anything. There'll be no orphanages for all of us of the children of God. There will be no prisons, jails, or police stations. I didn't say there wouldn't be any police there. I think you all are probably going, Okay. Two officers sitting up front here, all right? I think y'all are going, all right? Um, but, but, but you won't have to ever be on duty, ever, okay? Um, I have been told that the two hardest professions to find in heaven are attorneys and preachers. Um, there'll be no alarm systems or security gates. There'll be no vices or temptations, no arguments or misunderstandings. That's because there's no marriage in heaven. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist that. But uh, uh, and let me back up quickly. I'll, I'll, I'll delve into this a little more because sometimes it's very shocking to discover the fact that the Bible says there's no marriage in heaven. Don't, don't misunderstand. That doesn't mean that you will not know your spouse in heaven. You will. It just means, guess what? You're going to love me as much as you do her or him. Our perspective in heaven is, is, is a whole different perspective. I do believe the family units will still be known Okay? And, and we'll still have the memories that we get to share and revisit and laugh about, all right? But without the pain, without the... I see, I can't, you, you can't fully understand it, but yet we have these little insights. I, I mean, you know, think, th- think, think about the problems that there would be in heaven if there was marriage, and, and think about my Aunt Ethel. My Aunt Ethel buried five husbands, okay? She, she didn't divorce a one of them. She buried every single one of them. I, I told Aunt Ethel that on her next marriage license, it needed to say, uh, marriage to this woman could be hazardous to your health. Okay? But have all this confusion with Aunt Ethel when she got to heaven. All of her, all of her husbands were believers as far as I know. But, but, but no, no, no arguments. No more. You know what? No prejudice or racial discord in heaven. You know, those born and raised in California won't call us Okies anymore. There'll be no prejudice, all right, in heaven. Revelation 5, 9 says, and they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and open the seal. Because you, Jesus, were slain, and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe, from every language, from every people, from every nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign this is the song of redemption and recreation the sixth thing the Bible says about heaven is the place of internal rest it's a peace beyond description it's a joy that cannot be described the burdens of life are lifted off 
never to be picked up again. How many of you at church on a Sunday, after hearing somebody preach an inspiring message on, on cast your burdens upon him because he cares for you. Let your heart be anxious for nothing, but in all things give thanks. How many of you at church have dumped all of your trash on him? Have you ever done that? Okay, and then Monday morning you picked it all up again. Okay, I, I never had to take my trash out when we lived in the country. Okay, we, we had a big dumpster. I mean, I did take the trash out of the house. I don't, let me clarify, let me, let me back up. I never had to cart out, all right, the three containers, the green, the blue, and the gray. I just, I had one big container. We dumped it there. They came and picked it up. Now that I've moved to the city, I have three containers I have to haul out every week. You have to pray for me about that. I have a really bad attitude towards that. But you know what? I don't haul them back full. I wait till they're empty to bring them back. That's what God wants us to do with our frustrations and our burdens is give them to them and then leave them there. But, 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 no, no, no buts. Leave them. Wait. Earthly cares are left behind in heaven never to catch up with us again. Personal frustrations are never to overwhelm us again. Boy, that does sound like heaven, doesn't it? Heaven will also be a very active place, not just sitting around strumming harps. This is going to be really active. Uh, One of the things I think we'll get to do is to study and learn and never forget. Study and learn and never forget, man. Straight A's on the tests, okay? If there's finally, I don't think there'll be tests in heaven. Uh, I think that's part of the curse. But, But think about some things that we could study. How about sitting down with Noah and finding out about animal husbandry and shipbuilding? What about sitting under Moses for law and leadership? How about David? We could take music lessons and and, and, and how to dance naked in the street. David was known to do that. Um, How about studying Isaiah and learning about prophecy or John and philosophy or Paul and theology? I, I, I thought a lot this week, I wonder what Solomon would teach. Would he teach out of Proverbs or Song of Solomon? Well, since there's no marriage in heaven, probably not the Song of Solomon. He'd probably, if you all you aren't laughing at that, that means you have not read the Song of Solomon. You need to read the Song of Solomon, all right? Um, Not only will we study, but I think we'll explore the beauty of the new heaven and the new earth. My mama's in heaven right now. So she's got a head start on me. But if I die before the Lord Jesus comes back again, I will get to explore the new heaven and the new earth right along with my mother. See, where my mom is now, where loved ones who have who've died in faith that you know, who've already gone to heaven, the heaven that they are in now is not the final heaven that all of us will be in. The scripture says when Jesus comes back for the last time, he will then give us a new heaven and a new earth. Not scorched earth, brand new and that tells me that you and I get to enjoy the presence of both places and this gets a little weird and a little bizarre I know I know but if we could understand God he wouldn't be that great of a God so he gives us insights and it gives us an opportunity to celebrate not only will we explore and study but I think we will celebrate as we visit as we meet new people I can't wait to sit down with Elijah pick his brain and ask him some questions. I can't wait to visit with Esther and say, man, what was going through your mind when you did that? And then, of course, as you know, what I really can't wait to do when I get to heaven, anybody want to guess? Eat! We get to eat in heaven. It's there. Read it. I, I don't have time today because I've got to wrap this up. But Matthew chapter 8, verse 11, Revelation chapter 22, Mark 14, 25, Isaiah 25, 6. All of those passages talk about eating in heaven. And I hate to break this to some of you. It's okay here on earth. It's okay. So don't get mad at me. You will not be vegetarians in heaven. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's okay. Because you don't have to worry about the health issues in heaven. Because, man, go read Isaiah. Sumptuous meats. And Baptists, I'm sorry for you. You're going to be drinking some wine in heaven. 
because it says the finest of wines. That's what it says, okay? It's there. We're going to do this. The last thing is heaven is at the end of our Christian life. And I don't know how long your Christian life will be. For the thief on the cross, it was a matter of minutes. For some of us, it's decades. But Paul said it this way in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 and 8, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is really close. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the plans God had for me, the course. I've kept the faith I invested in Him. There is now laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all of them who love His appearing. Are you going to love appearing in the presence of Jesus when you enter heaven? Are you going to love if you happen to be alive at His appearing here on earth? Yes, we will. The question I have for you, though, is are you ready right now? Are you a prepared person who is ready for the prepared place that Jesus has provided for us all? Without repentance, there is no heaven. Without repentance, there is a hell. Billy Graham tells of a time early in his ministry when he arrived in a small town to preach a sermon at a church on a Sunday evening. Wanting to mail a letter, he paused and asked a young boy if the boy could tell him where the post office was. After the boy gave him directions, Dr. Graham thanked him and said, Hey son, if you'll come to church this evening, you'll hear me tell everybody how to get to heaven. And the boy said, Ah, eh, I don't think I'll be there. You don't even know your way to the post office. Could it be that we don't know how to point people to heaven? because we're not assured that we're going there ourselves. We don't know how to share Christ with others because we've got a far bigger problem of our own. You can settle that problem this morning. You can settle it this afternoon. You can settle it tonight. It doesn't have to be in church. But you need to come to a point in the place that you say, Lord Jesus, I don't understand all there is to know about you, but you didn't say I had to. You simply said I had by faith which means I don't have quite all the answers yet. I believe that Jesus is who he said he was, did what he said he would do, and I admit that I've been a bit independent from you, and that means I'm a sinner. And by your generous love and grace, you have offered to me forgiveness, and I'm ready to take what you've offered. Come live in my life. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. That's what's required. Next week, we're going to explore a little more deeply now that we know a little bit about what heaven is like and I hope it's, a, I hope it's been good for you to know these little bits and pieces of, of what heaven will be like uh, because you see I don't think it does us any good to know how great heaven's going to be if it doesn't make a difference in the way in which we live here and last week I very quickly covered four benefits of being heavenly minded while living on earth we're going to explore those four principles a little more closely next week we're going to find out that one of the benefits of focusing on heaven while we live on earth is it reminds us of the brevity of our life here. Number two, as we focus on heaven, it prepares us for the certainty of judgment. I've had to do a lot of study on this because I've been one of those who said, what other judgment can there be? If I get to heaven, what do I care? Mm, Paul says a couple of pretty important things about as believers in heaven, there is a place of judgment even for us. What does that look like? What does it mean? Number three, focusing on heaven motivates us to live better and more pure lives on earth. Purity is a word that's almost uh, foreign in our culture. So we'll talk a little bit about that next week. And then last of all, we'll wrap up with focusing on heaven gives us a perspective of suffering that helps us get through it. Um... High school, right? You graduate this year? Next year, okay. So you're juniors in school, high school, right? All right. 16? 17, okay. Um, 17 years. You ever gone through any suffering? Things you didn't like? Things that were a problem, and a pain, and an annoyance? Guess what? 
there's more to come. <laughs> Just thought I'd tell you. There's more to come. And the biggest question, the biggest question that we often ask ourselves, sometimes we ask others, is why. Next week, we'll look at some clarifying direction about suffering in this world. Heaven gives us a different perspective. Let's pray. Father, as much as I love to talk, as much as I love to put words together, there is, it's an impossible feat for me to describe how incredible heaven really is. Father, without the movement of your spirit in our presence in each of these Sundays, we will fall so far, far short of what, what I know should be accomplished in our lives. So we trust you for it. And Lord, as we leave here today, if there's anybody who, who discovered they, they were not prepared for the place you have prepared for us when we die, thank you for hearing their prayer today. It's not a, just as I have to prepare to go to the Grand Canyon, we've got to prepare to go to heaven. But there's only one thing on your preparation list. By faith, repent. Thank you, Father, for making it so simple. I know it's not easy, but it is simple. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day. See you tonight, uh, pasta feed. Come feed the pasta tonight. <laughs>